SOLIDWORKS model-based definition has just become available. In fact, my slide up until this morning said available Q1 of 2015, which we are now in. Uh, SOLIDWORKS Service Pack 1.1 now has this available um, to anybody that's purchased it. Now, this is something that can be bolted onto any C to SOLIDWORKS. And what it's used is for creating uh, what we call um, model-based definition files. These are really more or less PDF files, but they're PDF files or e-drawings, frankly, that contain a lot of communicative data for other people downstream. Now, it could be somebody that's in an inspection, uh, could be in manufacturing, but it's somebody out there that's going to need the SOLIDWORKS or 3D data, uh, but maybe doesn't have access to a SOLIDWORKS seat. So what MBD is going to create, based on templates that we supply, and there's dozens of these templates that are fantastic and, and laid out with different formats of thumbnails and views and, and where the view interactions happen to be. Uh, but it allows you to go ahead and use a template to go ahead and extract the SOLIDWORKS uh, DIM expert dimensions. So with your DIM expert tool, which has been in SOLIDWORKS for half a decade now, you can go ahead and scheme a model for manufacturing. And these are dimensions that you would add that would be relative to datum faces, they'd have GD and T, um, they would also have full tolerancing on those. These DIM expert dimensions have been used up to this point for annotation views for drawings or for the tile analyst tool, which is also part of SOLIDWORKS Premium, has been for a long time. Well, these dimensions here scheme the part differently than your sketch and feature dimensions because generally a sketch and feature dimension in a parametric system is set up so that you have predictable change when a dimension is modified versus the dimension that you'd use for manufacturing. Many times, most times, they are exactly the opposite of that. But essentially, when you scheme your parts out, you can then inject your part into one of these templates, and you'll have a PDF that you can send to anybody with a computer, Android device, or iDevice, uh, and they can open up this file, they can rotate it around into its flat positions, uh, and even go ahead and maybe have an attachment of the 3D CAD geometry built directly into this as well, like a step file. But in any event, uh, it's for communication that's going to have some fantastic capabilities that even SOLIDWORKS alone doesn't have, like broken views for very large framing assemblies, uh, in order to make a very large component maybe sit in a smaller viewable area. It's a lot easier to interpret in that way. So the tool itself is available. Uh, if you do want to see a, a deeper demo into this, please contact your sales representative and we can connect you uh, with a WebEx meeting um, or go to meeting and show you what this product is all about. Military has been using that for quite some time, by the way. It's more or less a, a black box where all of the enterprise data is available within those PDF files. All right, let's get back into some more modeling-specific things, some SOLIDWORKS basic stuff. Um, we're going to show you some things about how to enhance uh, building infrastructure support for those of you who build devices that are maybe uh, fairly compartmentalized or palletized size for you, but maybe go into a larger facility. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, Dealing with uh, different types of improvements to complex capabilities in SOLIDWORKS like surfacing and sheet metal, and then some fantastic new pattern functionality. Let's just roll right into these.